Ultra Instinct Goku is part of Jump Force Season 3 DLC. Yes, yes, and more. Yes. Now, I know what everyone's going to say in the comment section. How is Goku going to take up another slot as a character on Jump Force? Well, if you played enough Bandai Namco games, you know that Goku takes up multiple slots in every game that he's been in. But this is a whole brand new Goku. This is Ultra Instinct Goku coming to Jump Force Season 3 DLC. Mastered Ultra Instinct to be more exact. And this Goku is the flavor of the month. He's in every game that Goku is in. So no wonder that Jump Force Season 3 DLC would put in Mastered Ultra Instinct Goku as a DLC character. But right now, let's Let's discuss all the abilities, all the moves, and even the new ability J skill that is going to be coming into the game with Master Ultra Instinct Goku and Jump Force Season 3 DLC. First ability is the Autonomous Dodge, and this is synonymous with Ultra Instinct. So no doubt that this was gonna come in with him. And basically what you're gonna do is that you're gonna use two meter to automatically dodge everything for 10 to 15 seconds. Yes, two meter, that way we balance it. It's not just a one one meter move, pop one meter, you get, a, that would be too overpowered. So we give it a two meter cost and you automatically dodge everything. And I mean everything, unless, now this is the unless part, unless you are just sitting there tapping buttons and you're in the middle of a combo. Maybe that could be also a maneuver that could balance this technique out, making it not totally overpowered, but we gotta find a balance to where you don't have to be exactly still to use the ability, because that's also a, a kind of trap, because it's either gonna be really useful, and it's gonna be one of those abilities that you see on e every build, every CAC, every Goku is going to use this ability, or it's going to be useless to where people don't want to bother with it. And I would rather it be useful than useless. So giving it a two meter cost is going to be completely fair. Now moving on to the next ability that he's going to use, this is going to be his ranged ability, but it can also work close up and it's his air vacuum punches. Now, this ability used at a distance is gonna have the same speed and priority that a Rossi Shuriken is gonna have. So from a distance, you pop it off, it's going to hit the opponent, unless they just sit there and guard. But close up, if you use air vacuum punches, it's gonna unleash a barrage. Sort of like what Goku and Jiren were doing in the Terminal Power when Goku started using Ultra Instinct. They got really close and you basically both of them throwing or or ors in the air. You remember that whole fight, right? So that's gonna be what you see in Jump Force. So basically you're getting two moves in one. There's gonna be a one meter move. It's going to do really good damage for two reasons, one of which we're going to get later on into the video. But Air Vacuum Punches is going to be an ability that you're going to see used very often in a match. Bank on it. Now, the next ability that we're going to be talking about is probably another one of his signature abilities, and it's the Sliding Kamehameha. And this ability is going to be somewhat of a pseudo counter, but it's still going to be its own range projectile. Listen to me now how this is going to work, right? So, like in Xenoverse 2, where we have Divine Kamehameha, you're going to be able to use instant transmission multiple times to warp around the map as you get closer to your opponent. And when you get close to your opponent, you're going to trigger a cutscene that locks them into the Kamehameha unless they are blocking. Now, this is going to be very cumbersome because everyone's going to get used to blocking this technique right off the bat. But once people get used to seeing it, just sort of like right now, everyone's gotten used to Jorno, so he's not as strong and oppressive as he was initially. This ability is not going to be that broken, not going to be that overpowered, but if you use this Kamehameha and your opponent, this is a special counter attribute. If the opponent attacks you while you're using this Kamehameha, you will automatically lock them into the counter portion of the move. So you will automatically warp to them and counter whatever they're doing, even if it is an ultimate. Even if it's an ultimate, you will counter their ultimate startup and pop them with the sliding Kamehameha. So even if they're using, say if Kaguya throws out her death ball or something, right? You're going to teleport to her in the sky and Kamehameha her into the ground with that counter scene. This is going to be his most oppressive ability, but it's going to be his most balanced ability too. Now, this is going to cost one meter. Uh, 
I don't see it costing any more. It's gonna do not standard damage, but slightly above standard damage. And it's gonna be that ability that is one of Goku's signatures. And man, basically everything in Ultra Instinct's arsenal is signature, but this is gonna be that ability that you see on ranked every day. Now, for his ultimate, his ultimate ability, his ultimate weapon in his arsenal, we are going to get the Jump Force version of Silver Dragon Flash. Now, if you've ever seen this ability in Dragon Ball Fighters, it is beautiful. They did some good work on that ultimate animating it, and you're going to get the Jump Force equivalent in game. So basically, Goku dodges at the opponent, hits them several times in different dashes, leaving him in the middle of the air where he finally punches him one last time and sets them up for an upside down Kamehameha to the face. This is going to be beautiful in Jump Force Season 3 DLC and it should do obnoxious damage. Now, after that point, Goku is going to awaken and he's gonna have a passive version of a Thomas dodge where he does not have to spin meter using the move to actually use it. So this is basically where Goku hits the win button unless he's in the middle of punching, which is gonna be the only time that you can actually damage him and catch him slipping. So the opponent is gonna have to be smart in how they use Ultra Instinct when they decide to attack but you're gonna have to have a real sense of survival in Jump Force. And finally, we're gonna talk about his J skill. This is Ultra Instinct. That is going to be his signature J skill that is going to make him that powerhouse of a character. So, listen to this, right? It reduces the cost of all abilities by two full meters. That is going to be big, but the balance is the cost of moves can't go lower than one meter. So it balances it out so you won't get free use moves or anything, but all abilities that cost two meter, they're gonna go down to one. Abilities that cost maybe three meters, they're gonna go down to one. This is gonna make him very unique in having one of the most powerful J skills in the game, but that's not the end of it, right? He's gonna have another effect where he gets a 50% increase on the damage of everything he does, all of his abilities, his attacks, everything that he does, this is gonna enhance it and make him a monster. So the character itself is gonna be big, but you also introduce a J skill that's going to make any character that equips it an absolute monster. This way you kind of buff CAC, but balance CACs. So this is gonna make any CAC that equips this ability an absolute monster. This J skill is going to change the game, but that is not all. Also, it's going to have the secret effect of adding the Ultra Instinct Aura to your character. So Goku's gonna have his Ultra Instinct Aura. You equip this, you're gonna have the Ultra Instinct Aura as well. But in addition to that, when your health gets below 25%, you get a 25% additional damage boost and a 25% damage reduction on all damage done to you. Big, this is Ultra Instinct. J skill is going to absolutely change the game. So that's been Master Ultra Instinct Goku and Jump Force Season 3 DLC. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below, and I'll see you in the next one.